Liberian girl Michael Jackson You came and you changed my world The kid inside I love so brand new Part 1 Let's get this out of the way right now Both my boys hate Michael And I love him So What's gonna happen now? Hmm? Anyone dare say something bad about Michael? Hmm? I'm gonna fight them to the death! I have to defend him. <laughs> He's been through so much already. But there it takes the sound before you make it. Actually, I had to convince them to let me film this segment because they were like, why would you talk about Michael Jackson? He's a has-been, he's over the hill, he's whatever thing, you know, it's always also about what he went through, obviously, with his trial, which ended in 2004. One hour, one hour. First of all, we have to talk about, of course, his appearance, because it changed so much over the years, and it was funny, <laughs> remember that, when we watched an interview from Michael, and he said, oh, I only had two surgeries on my nose. And we're like, oh, okay, sure, Michael. What about that cleft in your chin and your cheekbones and the whole face? And the nose is practically non-existent at this point. There's nothing left, probably. When they announced that the charges have all been cleared, I was dancing, I mean, I was so ecstatic, it was like, oh my gosh, and you could see, I remember, people were just hugging and crying and they were so happy for him, and he had no emotions whatsoever. Under the moonlight. I understand why, I mean, he went through so much with that trial. His life was completely destroyed from it, in a way. And to this day, I hear that he's sort of broke. Like, is it possible for Michael to be broke when you think about it? But uh, that he can't pay his mortgage and he has a lot of uh, financial issues with loans and stuff like that. And when you've been a star of his stature, earning millions and you know never having to worry about money, all of a sudden you have to come back to earth and deal with all those pressures. Do, do, do. Do you remember the frenzy, 1983, the year belonged to Michael, plain and simple. His album just completely destroyed every record in the history of music. And I heard somewhere, I hope it's true, that the album Thriller to date has sold 104 million copies. As horror looks you right between the eyes. But the thing is that his music is classic. You hear Billy Jean or Thriller or Beat It or even his later hits and it's all so great still. It sounds wonderful. Actually, there's a lot of albums I like and um, true, he could never go back to the Thriller glory. It's over. I mean, it's a different era for everybody. So no one will ever shatter that record. It's impossible now in the context of the music industry as we know it with the digi digital files and sharing. And they say, why, why? Tell him that it's human nature. It was bad, like four years after Thriller. And even then, critics and even fans alike were like, okay, well, it doesn't sell as much as Thriller, it's not as good and blah, blah, blah. It's always the same thing because when you have such a huge hit, it's impossible to recreate it in two people's expectations. Why, why does he do me that way? Then there was Dangerous, and then there were a couple of compilations, uh, History, I think, and Blood on the Dead Floor. And I admit, it, they were really good, but there was an album that I really liked, which was Invincible. You rocked my world, you know you did, and everything I'm gonna give. And there ain't nothing we could find Someone like you to call mine By that time, his image was already so tarnished that the album, in terms of the music, didn't have a chance. Even though when you look at his, his history 
all through the years, all those albums. The music never suffered in terms of quality. It was always there. It's his image that came in a way, and the allegations and the eventual trial. And I remember that period. It lasted, what, a year, I think? And you would see these recreations of the actual trial because the cameras were not allowed in it. But to actually see this impersonator recreating what happened in the courtroom that day, it was so surreal. And by the way, they didn't want me to call it the kid inside. They were like, oh no, don't call it that. The bad jokes and, you know, obviously, <laughs> people are going to think right away about what he went through with that trial. But I was like, you know what? Michael is still a kid inside, even though he's, what, 48, 49 now? He's still that little kid who didn't have a childhood. And I remember something very funny about um, a movie called I Think I Love My Wife from Chris Rock. And there's a scene in it where he explains that no adult is above talking about Michael and having an opinion because every single person on this planet probably has an opinion on him. He's such an easy target because of the looks, because of the image, because of what he went through. When you see such a superstar with millions to spend and they don't really realize that most people will never see that much money ever. So it sort of feels insane, right guys? Yeah, I know. It's like you, you saw those spending sprees that it was just going on and he was buying stuff that made no sense and the whole um, burn unit in his house. I think it was a legend, but it's probably true. I don't know. I mean, the remains of the elephant man. And we've heard so many stories about Michael that it's hard to decipher what's true and what isn't. But that trial really destroyed him in terms of image. And I'm not sure if he's going to be able to come back, even though the tide is already turning. You came and you changed me, girl. A feeling so true.